Welcome friends, in this one I'm going to give you a kind of intuitive explanation as to why for f of x as e to the x, the derivative is also e to the x. We'll do this graphically. So begin with a graph as follows, of e to the x. So when I do that, I'm going to have e to the x, I punch it in here, it gives me a nice graph. Now the key is to understand that you have to zoom in on a very small window. So I'm going to do that by doing the following. Where do I zoom in? That might be a question too. Anywhere, it doesn't matter where. Just zoom in somewhere. It's an arbitrary choice in other words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of zoom in around 1. And when I do that immediately, you see what happens is the graph that at first appears to have curvature actually now looks like a flat straight line. That's one artifact of zooming in. I can even do it more. I'm going to do it very tightly here, right here. So now it pretty much does look like an actual straight line. And then let's see what happens. Let me just lock this. I'm going to draw here, for example, beginning from 1, a little slope triangle. And I'm going to kind of go over, let's say, to here. It can go to about 1.04. It's very close to 1. And then here I'm going to go over to the graph itself. That's a slope triangle. In other words, then I'm going to draw another line this way. What this is saying is, if I now find the slope that this triangle represents, then it's pretty much the same as just finding the slope at 1, because as you can see, they pretty much match. So how do I do that? Take a look. I'm going to proceed by follows. I'm going to say e raised to the 1.04 minus e raised to the 1.00, say. So what is that? That shows up in the graph as follows on the picture, that is. This part is e to the 1.04 minus e raised to the 1.00. This shows up in the graph as that vertical change. And then you're going to take this quantity and you're going to divide it by 1.04 minus 1.00. Where does that show up? Well, let me just make a copy of it so I can show it to you. That shows up in the graph as the horizontal change right there. So this quantity that we are computing is an approximation to the value of the derivative. It's a difference quotient that we learned in pre-calculus. Now when I compute this, it's going to be about the following. Let me kind of punch this over here. Now I need to change this to numerical form. So I'm changing each of the e's to numerical form. And the computer will do the calculation for us. When I do that, I get this value, 2.773380. Now look carefully. What is e to the first itself, which is the value of the function? It's e to the first. And when you compute this quantity, look, it's 2.718282. That's not bad, actually, for the following reason. You can tell that already 2.7 here agrees with the 2.7 right here, see? Now take a look at the next stage in the process. I'm going to kind of basically write the following down. That thus far, the derivative of e to the x, at x equals 1, it's pretty well approximated by this difference quotient. Because the derivative, remember, is just a slope. So this kind of approximates it very well. But then that itself, you know, roughly speaking, is very well approximated by e to the first, which is just the value of the function at 1. <laughs> so take a look at the next stage in the process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write now this as e to the 1 plus 0 0.04. I'm separating off the 0 0.04 part on purpose. Minus e raised to the first. And in the bottom, I'm going to divide as 1.00 plus point. 0, 04, so I'm separating off the point 0, 04 again, minus 1.00. Why would I do this? Because now take a look at that expression. That is still the difference quotient, a little bit rewritten. It's going to be e raised to that same expression, that same expression in the top, but in the bottom, the positive one and the negative one cancel off, you see? And what's left over is just 0 0.04, which is the same as the 0 0.04 in this position. Do you see that right here? And also now the same thing on the bottom right here. It's also in red there, 0 0.04. And remember the entire time, this is just about equal, roughly speaking, to e to the positive first. Next stage in the process, why did I choose, for example, 1? Why did I choose 0 0.04? No reason, really. In other words, this quantity, 0 0.04, this quantity is the same one right here, the same one right there, you see, you kind of make them all red. That's just a separation from here over to here, right there. It's just a little change in the value of x. 
So what I could do now is I can imagine that I could redraw my triangle as follows. I could make that even smaller. I could draw my triangle this way right here. You see this? In other words, I could make the horizontal change there even smaller. And after that, if I felt like it, I could make the horizontal change even smaller. Let me just fix that line segment. It should be straight kind of going up. See, I've made the horizontal change there even smaller. In other words, I'm moving along the x-axis towards positive 1. So in general, what I would do is I would write this quantity this way. I would say e raised to the 1 plus h, where h is the size, roughly speaking, of the horizontal leg there on the bottom, okay? And I would subtract the value of the function at e to the positive first, and then I would divide that by the size of the horizontal leg, which is h. So what is that telling us? What I should also do now is the following. I'm going to take this numerical label aside. Let me put that back where it belongs, right here. And it looks like this. Okay, let me take the numerical labels aside. And I'm going to make, make things a bit more general now, or abstract. So e to the 1 plus h minus e to the first. That's this quantity right there. It's the vertical change. And then h itself, that's this quantity. That's the horizontal change for any of these triangles that you kind of make there, okay? So if I wanted to, just to declutter the picture is the following. And so I have decluttered the picture, and in other words, I have only one triangle in there now. And h is the horizontal leg. e to the 1 plus h minus e to the first is the change, the vertical change. And as you can see, this is still, roughly speaking, just about equal to e to the first still. And this assumes that h is a small quantity, so it's not too very far away from 1, in other words, okay? Lastly, what we can do is make the transition as follows. To get the actual value of the derivative, is we can simply take the limit as follows. The limit as h goes to 0 of e to the 1 plus h minus e to the first divided by h. In other words, it's like taking this triangle here and shrinking it down towards where x has the value 1 and making it very in small. In other words, infinitesimally small eventually, okay? And then the entire time, this would essentially be equal then to e to the first. It would become equal. This is very close to the definition of a derivative. You see, this here represents a derivative when x has the value 1 because it's a fixed value for x right here. And the triangle is shrinking towards x equals 1. More generally, the way you want to think about this is there's nothing special about choosing x equals 1. So for that reason, what you could do is this. You could say that it's just the limit as h approaches 0. So let me put an h in here and 0 in here. Not simply of e to the 1 plus h, but an arbitrary value of x. So you would say e to the x plus h minus e to the x, which is the value of the function at that x, and then you divide this by h, which then would be the same as e to the x, in other words. If you look at this last step, it's modeled on a previous step. The only difference is that in the previous step, there's a 1 here, there's a 1 here, and it's e to the first. But that was an arbitrary choice for x, so I can just say e to the x plus h minus e to the x. This is x, this is x, and this is x, and then you have this h and this h. And lastly, that limit on the left side is the definition of the derivative, essentially, for any x that you plug in. So in other words, you would have then that the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. And this is a way to think about why the derivative of e to the x is the same thing, e to the x. So that's all I want to say, so if it's been helpful, perhaps interesting, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, please subscribe. I'll see you in another video.